October 1987, during excavations on the west bank of the River Lee in Springfield Park, near Clapton, northeast London, a late Saxon logboat was found. It had been preserved by waterlogging for 1,000 years. Although it was damaged by the machine which had uncovered it, it could be clearly seen that it was originally about 3.8 metres long, that's 12 feet, and about 0.6 metres wide and 0.4 metres deep. It had square ends like a punt, but its bottom was a bit more rounded. It was made of oak and had been repaired at least once. It was not a Viking ship, but a small boat used in calm waters, like many other boats all over Britain at that time. It was probably owned by a Saxon family who fished and farmed in the Lee Valley. Ordinary people, not kings, warriors or grand merchants. The find was brought to the Museum of London by the North Section of the Department of Greater London Archaeology. It was carefully cleaned by the Museum's Conservation Department. Drawings and notes were made by Peter Marsden and a study of how the boat was made by Damien Goodburn, both in, of the Museum of London. The boat was then tree-ring dated by Ian Tyers to between 950 and 1000 AD, making it about 1000 years old. To learn more about how such boats were built and how they could be used, a plan was made to build an exact replica of the craft. As if on cue, the great hurricane of October 87 struck, blowing down many large oaks, similar to the Saxon oak that had been used to build the original boat. James and Ruth Norman kindly donated one such Winfeld oak from their tract of traditional medieval style woodland in Bromley, Kent. The MAS unit organised a group of volunteer archaeologists to build the replica using traditional axes and adzes. The project was supervised by an archaeologist who researches into and builds ancient types of small boats using traditional methods. Detailed records were made of how long it took to complete each stage of the work and what was done. <laughs> The first step was to trim off the oak's branches and chop it to length. The cutting across the log was mainly done with axes. The Saxons were great craftsmen with axes and did not seem to use saws for this type of woodwork. The base of the tree was used as the wider end. Then the bottom and the sides of the boat were roughly shaped with axes and adzes with the boat's bottom uppermost. The volunteers gradually got used to using the traditional tools in ways which have long been forgotten. After three weekends of very hard work during the winter, the roughly hewn boat was ready to turn over so the top and inside of the boat could be shaped. But first, the archaeologists had to check that the shape was an accurate copy of the Saxon original. Measurements were made and some parts of the boat were trimmed carefully. Two holes were then drilled in the bottom of the boat where the Saxon builders would have drilled them. The holes were drilled so that when the hollowing of the inside took place, the builders could tell when they were approaching the right place to stop. Using only poles as levers, four people rolled the log over, even though at that stage it still weighed about a ton. By cutting grooves across and along the log, the waste wood could be split off quickly in large chunks. By the end of the fifth weekend, most of the waste had been removed. The boat was looking like the original, except that it had not been hollowed out. Using charcoal from the cooking fire, the shape of the inside of the boat was carefully marked out. The same grooving technique using axes was used, 
to remove the bulk of the waste wood. Most of the hollowing was done on the seventh weekend and the thickness gauge holes in the bottom were eventually found so the builders knew they could safely stop and that the bottom would be the right thickness, about 10 centimetres or 4 inches. The shape of the boat was carefully checked again and then the final trimming of the outside and inside was done with the adze and special axes sharpened on one side only like a chisel. Once the shape of the log boat was the same as the original boat, a group of volunteers were called in to help launch the boat, which the builders decided to call Ravensbourne, after the neighbouring stream. A rope was attached to the bow end and the boat was hauled over a pathway of logs to the nearest stream, about 70 metres away. Five people could move the boat on level ground, but over fallen trees which barred the way, more were needed. <laughs> Isn't that right, John? Yeah. Come on, John. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> The log boat was still green, that is, full of sap, which made it about half again as heavy as it would have been after drying out or seasoning for perhaps a year or more. The original builders 
probably let the boat partly dry out before they launched it. They filled any small cracks in the log with a mixture of beeswax and pine tar to stop leaks. One, two, three. Hang on, hang on, hang on. The boat was launched and the team all took turns to try out paddling or pushing the boat around with a pole. The paddle used was also a replica of one found in Southwark of about the same age as the log. Though still in a heavy state, the boat could carry up to four people, which was more than expected. However, in Saxon times, the boat probably carried a couple of people and perhaps small cargoes of fish or farm produce down the Lee to the rapidly growing town of Londonwick, London. Or maybe the Saxon family who probably owned the boat just used it as a ferry and fishing boat for the watery valley of the untamed River Lee. The results of this experiment with early boat building and use are properly analysed. We may know more about how ordinary people travelled about and worked in the Lee Valley about 100 years before the Norman Conquest. This medieval replica represents one of the types of river transport and the Marine Archaeological Survey Unit is fighting to identify and record in the offshore zone. The MAS unit is extremely grateful to the staff of the Greater London Archaeological Unit and the Museum of London for information on the original find, to volunteers from the Underwater Research Group of the London Institute of Archaeology and Passmore Edwards Museum for work on the construction and also to the Norman family for supplying the raw material, that is, the tree. <laughs> 